here tonight. Amen. Who's your friend? Troy, Troy like T-R-O-Y type Troy. Okay. Am I hearing it out? People have been in my church, Rodrigo. I call, what did I call you for how many years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was being nice, I guess, but after a while you change your name or you let the pastor know that I'm like messing up. <laughs> At the, I wasn't stereotyping any Latinos. Maybe I was. I don't know. You know us white people. We're bad. And, uh, <laughs> see how you make fun of all that junk going on? You can't make fun of nothing no more without going to jail or get a lawyer. It's ridiculous. Anyway, well, we're not politically correct here is for sure. Uh, we have a visiting evangelist from Alabama, the heart of Dixie, Brother Mark McGuire. Magahi, Mark, otherwise known as the Fat Evangelist. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Politically incorrect. I know. So I'll get, mean. I'll get Ricardo after you. You sure will. The <laughs> first Timothy chapter one. Yes? It's on. I think so. It's on, buddy. Yes, there is. Uh huh. It's all on you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention to that man back there behind the curtain. Amen. First Timothy chapter 1. Is that what I said? Well, it has been good to be with you folks this week. Uh, always good to be here. I love this church. I love you all. Even Ricardo. Amen. I wish he hadn't have said that now. Amen. Here in 1 Timothy, Paul is one to name names. That's how you get Phoebe. 
Amen. And he names a bunch of them and Eunice and there's a bunch of people in the Bible that he mentions. And we're going to look at some here. Verse number 18. The Bible says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Now, folks, I don't know how you look at Christianity. I don't know how you look at, I'm going to narrow it down. I don't know how you look at your obligation to Christianity because you ought to have an obligation to it. Amen. The only way this grows is through us. Amen. So Christianity is a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So I want to ask you, how do you think you're doing in this warfare? <laughs> Amen. Are you at least swinging? Are you at least in the fight? Before I was saved, in the B.C. area of my life, before Christ, we used to get into a few fisticuffs every now and then. Not a few, but a lot. And uh, we liked it. We grew up fighting in school. I had four older brothers, so that's all we ever knew. My dad was a fighter. My oldest brother boxed, and, and we loved it. And now you can't even fight in school. <laughs> Elementary school, they call the sheriff. Hey Amen. I mean, if somebody calls you a name, punch him in the nose. <laughs> somebody makes fun of your sister, trip them, make them eat dirt or something. That was the way people used to handle things. But now everything is... Amen, we're in the snowflake generation. And that has crossed over into spiritual things. Amen. So Christianity, a militant type Christianity, where we fight with the Spirit of God, the sword of the Spirit and all that, it's not appealing to the average Christian. Amen. That ain't what I'm preaching about, but it sure feels good to hit that lick while you go by there. Because it says that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So get in the fight. For I was saved to see two guys. I hate to see two guys argued. I'd push them into each other. Go on. Fight and get it over with. Don't be like girls. Amen. <laughs> then it says in verse 19, holding faith, and a good conscience. Amen. So faith and a good conscience is something you need to hold on to. And if not, here's what happens. Which some, having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck. You see that? Said of whom? Now here he names some people. Now that wouldn't be very politically correct nowadays. Amen. That'd be like me getting up here tonight and saying, don't make a disaster out of your life and name two or three people that used to sit here that have. And I could. Amen. I mean, I could do it very well. I got people's names and minds and faces racing across my head right now. But that's what Paul does. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander? whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You know what he said? He said, these have put away because of the faith and their conscience. They didn't, they didn't fight. They didn't get in. And you know what happened to them? They made shipwreck. And I want to preach about that term tonight, that term shipwreck. Amen. Father, we come before you. We thank you for the word of God. I thank you for the, the boldness, the bluntness of the Apostle Paul. God, these words are wrote down in the canon of Scripture that tonight we may read, and Lord, you can speak to our hearts. Help us, Lord, through the preaching of the word of God. That, Lord, you'll help us. No one here to make shipwreck. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. It, I don't have to go into an elaborate definition of what shipwreck means. Everybody in here can understand that. Amen. It is a description of a life disaster. And that life disaster affects you spiritually. 
You can try to hide it, but everything spiritually concerning the faith and trying to live for God, if you throw that stuff away, you'll go shipwrecked. And, buddy, we have seen it. This old world tries to embrace it. Uh, I am politically incorrect. Amen. People talk about gender equality and all that kind of stuff. Buddy, you are shipwrecked if you're a man and you think you're a girl. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. Something happened. Something's wrong. Amen. I say you're shipwrecked if you're married. And then you can look at your little wife and say, I hate you. Amen. I believe you're shipwrecked if you can do your kids wrong. And I've, I've known all those cases. I can tell you name after name after name tonight. I could write a book on it. Amen. So don't go shipwreck. <laughs> Amen. Everybody's affected by a wreck. When something happens to somebody, it affects all of us. In a church, when somebody goes bonkers and goes shipwreck, it affects everybody. Amen. I tried to talk about it this morning, and I try to, I'm, I'm like Brother Bob. I know every preacher's like this. You get stuff go across your heart, and you try to convey it, and you don't feel like words are capable of it. Amen. Being in church, folks, being in church gives you an advantage in life. Amen. And just uh, me being an evangelist that comes here puts a pressure on me. Have you ever heard of the term beholden to somebody? Amen. You knowing me and knowing what a standard we're supposed to be, I'm beholden to you. I'm beholden to my church folks back home. The people that know me that I go to church with, I've got an obligation not to shipwreck. Say, why? Because of them. I don't want to break their heart. I don't want to break Brother Bob's heart. And, amen. And all the other preachers that I know and my friends. Amen. I've got an obligation. Nowadays, people take the obligation off of them. Listen, folks, you're a part of this church, man. People are watching you. Don't go shipwreck. <laughs> amen, amen. That's good preaching if I am doing it. Amen. Seems like it always, a wreck, seems like it always happens at night. <laughs> there was a, Brother Chandler talked about a grandma up there in the mountains where he lived up there in Tennessee. And she woke up one night, and one of her nieces, something staying with her. She woke up in the night, got up, and the niece heard her up in the middle of the night. She got up, she goes, what's wrong, Grandma? And she goes, my goodness, honey, didn't you hear that? She goes, Grandma, I didn't hear nothing. She goes, there was a bad wreck. And she's going towards the door. She's got her flashlight. She opens the door and walks out in the yard, towards the yard, towards the road, and said, there was a wreck right out here. And her niece saying, Grandma, nothing like that. Well, there wasn't no wreck. You can see. She goes, well, honey, it woke me up. I heard it wreck. They come in, and she got her settled down, got her back in the bed. About an hour and a half later, knock at the door. She got up, niece got up, and they went to the door, and there stood a highway patrolman. And about 60 miles away, her grandson got in a wreck. And she heard that wreck. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, she did. And it's 60 miles away, woke her up, got her out of bed. You say, well, that's kind of spooky. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Amen. You say, well, what are you saying? Oh, ain't you got a grandma that loves you? You got a pastor that loves you? You got a mama that loves you? You got out here in this old world, I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll go shipwreck. Amen, amen. I got kids right now that I know. I get calls through the weeks, and I got one call the last week, or this week, and a young lady, she's made a mess out of her life. And now she's made the worst mistake. She married the idiot. Amen. And I get to preach at their church here in a few weeks, and I'll get to say idiot from the pulpit. 
Amen. I've seen ruined lives, ruined, ruined families, ruined churches, seen shipwrecks, bad ones. Amen. How, much, how many wrecks can you go through? How many wrecks can there be? Everybody here knows about wrecks. I don't care how old you are here. You've probably heard of the Titanic. Amen. You've heard of the Edmund Fitzgerald, surely here living in Michigan. Amen. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down to the big lake they call Gitchagumi. That's, amen, that's right around here. That's up there where Brother Tony and them live, up there close and up White, was it Whitefish Bay or whatever it is? Amen. And all that mess, say, what is what made that famous? Just a ship that went down, had 20-something men on it, and they made a song about it. And that shipwreck is gone, man, and they say, what'd they do? They sailed out a little too late. The, that the Bible says, the song says, the winds of November that year came early. But if you get out here away from God, you're going to feel a cold wind blow against your soul too. It'll make you shipwreck somewhere and run aground. So how does a person shipwreck? How does a person wreck in life? I'll tell you how. Wrong decisions. <laughs> Amen. I don't know, man, how many I've made in my life, but I could, I could fill a volume of books with them. Amen. The best thing to do is try to make some good decisions. I can help you with some of them. One is stay in church. Another one is if it's wrong, quit it. You can't quit it, kick yourself. Amen. If you know it's wrong, Quit doing it. Make a decision to keep doing it anyhow. You're looking for a wreck. My dad used to come and check our cars when we first started driving. I got my first car when I was, I guess I was around 13 years old. Some guy gave my dad a car for me. I had a 62 Chevy Bel Air, three on the tree. At 13 years old, I could, I'd drive that thing everywhere. And didn't have no license or nothing like that. But my dad, he would check our tires and check the oil and show us what you need to do. Amen. And uh, my dad, if, if ever he changed a tire on our car, we'd have to get two or three people to help us break the lug nuts because he'd tighten them with his, you know, super grip. But he's always a stickler on maintenance, keeping your car to where when you get in it, you can go from point A to point B and not you be the wreck because of what you didn't do. Amen. Wrong decisions. You can make some bad decisions in life. Amen. Who you hang around with. <laughs> Amen. You girls that are here. Amen. I've only got a couple here that's not. I don't. You're not married, are you, young lady? All right. Here's a here's a here's a great here's a great bit of advice. Don't marry an idiot. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a great advice in life you know how many have and they've made their life shipwreck and it works both ways i've seen some young men find the wrong gal i tell them all the time barbie can't cook <laughs> amen barbie she she ain't gonna cook amen and you better find somebody that loves god Find somebody that ain't ashamed to say amen in church. Stay in. Wrong decisions, wrong decisions. People make some bonehead decisions. Uh, it, could all be, it could all be taken care of if you just didn't do that. Amen. I got a buddy of mine that went through a bitter divorce. Wife got her a job. Mess, mess, mess. Say, what happened? Bad decisions. And she made her family and her life and her home go shipwrecked. And the guy about lost his mind. Amen. I know what that feels like. You got a child that goes astray. I'm telling you what, it'll almost drive you insane. You get to where you can't sleep at night. My wife, I thought I was going to lose her. Cry herself to sleep every night for a month. You say, why? What happened? A wreck! That's what happened. A shipwreck. 
hang around the wrong people, listen to the wrong things. Amen. Look at the wrong things. Oh, here we go. Preach against music and all that. Yeah. Amen. Nobody ever became a drunk without bad music. Nobody ever became a drug addict without bad music. Nobody ever went goth without bad music. You talk about a wreck. You say, well, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't like this. Well, <laughs> when you get a little boy or a little girl, you want them to be gothic? You ever hear the music they listen to? Sounds like the devil singing. I've got some of them. I got a collection box. You ought to see my collection box I've gotten through the years preaching. I've got enough piercings that I could go all the way across the altar here with them. Eyebrow rings, nose rings, tongue rings, face. Amen. I preach the kids look like they fell into a tackle box. Belly button rings. You know, the first time I ever got a belly button ring was up in Chicago, the little guy's church. It was one of the good girls in his church. I was preaching there and preaching to the young people, and she came to me after the service crying. She's about 18 years old, a good girl. You'd know her. She goes, I turned 18, Brother Mark, and I got rebellious. My folks don't even know about it. She says, here, I don't want this no more. And I put my hand out, and she put something in my eyes. I said, what's that? She goes, that's my belly button ring. I said, that was in your belly button? I said, now it's in my hand. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Amen. I didn't know folks put stuff in their belly button before that. I try to get stuff out of mine every once in a while. I don't know about y'all. Amen. I got to have a full stomach for even clean mine. <laughs> Amen. Got such a severe any. But I didn't know, man, people did that, kids did that. I didn't know. You ought to see some of the things that we've seen through the years. I've got in my box, I've got, I don't know how many razor blades, I've got exacto blades in there where kids cut themselves. Say, what happened? Shipwreck somewhere. I was talking to three girls a couple of years ago in the same meeting. Three girls came, had a little youth revival, they were all suicidal. I said, you need to talk to your mama and your daddy. And they all said the same thing. I can't talk to my mom and dad about that. You mean to tell me it's at the point where you can't talk to your own children about suicide? Wrong decisions. Shipwreck, shipwreck. Amen. Somebody gets in the car driving, you start making wrong decisions, you'll wreck too. Won't be long. You pass somebody on the wrong side. You, everybody's seen it. What are, you, what are you doing, idiot? Well, they ain't long. They keep making decisions like that. They're going to wreck. You ever come up on a wreck? You ever been involved in a bad wreck? If you've ever been in a bad wreck, you'll never forget the sound. And I'll tell you what else you won't forget. You won't forget what it smelled like. Am I right? We come up on a wreck one day, me and Brother Drummond, we were going to play golf. We was in a meeting together. We come up over a hill, this gal in this white LTD, she had crossed the lanes of traffic, crossed the medium, and come over, and a truck T-boned her and hit her. And I'm telling you, the dust hadn't even settled yet. The truck never even hit its brakes. Just, I mean, just boom. And we walked up there, and that gal in that truck, she was sitting there in the truck. She's dazed. And it's all bent in, and Rick went over there, and her legs were kind of pinned. And he was able to get her out of there. And I went over to the door of that white Ford, and that gal had knocked her all the way in the back seat. She didn't have a seatbelt on. And her arm was all twisted around. I could tell it was broke. Just something was shattered in there. And she had blood coming out of her ears. And when I walked up to the door to get ready to open the door, there's a guy walked up, and he goes, I'm a, I'm a cop, off-duty cop. I looked and I said, well, open the door, man. And he's sitting there fooling around with the king, get the door open. I reach over, and I said, here, dummy. <laughs> you know? Then he's standing there. He's looking at her. I go, see if she's breathing. I said, there ain't much we can do, but if she's got something blocking her, maybe we can save her life that way or something. And she's barely breathing. 
I don't know. I, I, I doubt if she made it. But as I looked around in that car, and you could still smell, and the airbag, the airbags make a smell. The car does. The, just the, the thing hitting like that and the gasoline. You'll never forget the smell. And I looked around in there, and there was pill bottles and booze bottles and everything laying around everywhere. Didn't have her seatbelt on. And I don't know, man. She's probably out all night, all day. Say, what wrong decisions. Amen. We was up Arkansas there and up on the main road above the church there. There's a, there's a road that goes out the mountains there, Bromwell Ridge, and it dead ends into one of the little main roads. It goes into Heber Springs and all. And that road, one night, five kids was in a car, and they didn't slow down, didn't stop or anything, just went right through that intersection, right across the road, and hit a bunch of trees. And it killed all five of them. Five little old kids from there in the community. And they said there was a the word got out. Folks come out there. And one of them guys pulled up, and he recognized the car. And he knew his daughter was in that car. And they said he was walking around, and they couldn't tell who was in it. Uh, you can imagine what the inside of the car looked like. It was mangled. They couldn't even get the doors open. And he's walking around, and, and somebody said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm looking for Sissy. She ain't in there. She ain't in there. I know she ain't in there. And he's on the tree line, the ditch, crawling around. They said, Sissy, where are you? Sissy's in there. And they come and told him, said, sir, he said, oh, We've seen there's five in there. Was your daughter one of the five? She wasn't in there. She wasn't in there. Yes, she was. You can try to act like things don't happen, but in the wreck it does. Say, what was that? Bad decision. All out drinking. Amen. Wrong decisions will make you go shipwreck. I've known a lot of people leave the faith, leave church, leave their Bible. Amen. Leave their pastor. Say, what happens? It never ends good. Amen. So well, I'll live my own way. I'll live my own life. Yep, and you'll make some wrong decisions. Amen, amen. I'll tell you what else. How's a person wrecked? Warnings are discounted. Don't do it. Don't do it. They do it anyhow. Don't marry him. Don't marry her. They do it anyhow. Don't go with them. Don't listen to that. Don't watch that stuff. They do it anyhow. Warnings are discounted. Just push it out of the way. Amen. Marijuana is not a bad drug. <laughs> That's a, amen, what a brain surgeon. It's an herb. So is poison ivy, stupid. Amen. Aloe vera is an is a, is a herb. Yeah, so is poison oak and sumac. Try rubbing that on the wound next time or a sunburn. <laughs> Amen. Poppies are little flowers, too, and they make heroin out of it and everything else. Amen. Wrong decisions. Warnings are discounted. A lot of wrecks could have been avoided. Amen. A lot of shipwrecks could have been avoided. A lot of people wreck in life. Well, they never had to. Somebody said the saddest, per, the saddest words by tongue or pen is to say what could have been. Amen. I just told them I'm going to stay with the squares. I'm hanging with the nerds. I was up there last week with Job and them and them boys. You know, the, the way the door goes there at the mission church there, Amazing Grace, I don't know how many of y'all have been there. But there's a pew right there in the door. The boys used to all sit on the pew. Joe, Barnabas, John, Paul. All three of them boys sat on that row. And they were as dead as a hammer. They never said amen. They never smiled. They never did anything. And when I would go preach to Brother Hood, I always called it, there's the nerd section. I said, you boys, you are the most miserable looking fellers I've ever seen in my life. And Job said, he gets so mad at me. Amen. You know what he said finally? He said, he's right. Amen. Now those nerds are running the church. Job is the pastor now. And it kills me. He's up there trying to get people to shout. 
I'm, I'm sitting back here going, uh-huh. <laughs> And those boys were raised in church. They wasn't raised out in the world or anything. But you know what they was? They just deadheads. Amen. He says, I told you these things, these prophecies and all this stuff, so you might war a good warfare. Then he says, if you don't, you'll wind up like these boys, Hymenaeus. Amen. He named their names. Concerning the faith, they made shipwreck. Don't you do it. Wrong decisions, wrong decisions. I was preaching in a church, and one of the preacher's daughters had left. She had got a mess and left. And the preacher's got 11 kids. He's got you beat. And one of his daughters, she's, I guess, late 20s, almost 30. She got her a job and messed up some man, married man, and ended up leaving the church, leaving everybody. Nobody talked to nobody. They was a close family, too. And then one day I get a text from her. Dear Uncle Mark, I never dreamed I'd ever go this far. My life is a mess. And I called my pastor buddy, and I said, man, I just got a text from your daughter. And he said, man, none of us has heard from her. And she texted me one time there. She said, I watched one of your messages on YouTube. She said, don't ever stop preaching. Here she is out. Two years went along that way. This March, I was at their church up there in Pennsylvania. And I'm sitting there in the pew getting ready to preach. And I felt something. You ever felt anything? You kind of look around. I looked around, and there she sat. And, buddy, I'm telling you, I about lost it. And the preacher... He didn't know she was there yet. And he's doing something. Well, he gets up to lead singing, and I'm sitting there going, wait till he. And he gets up there like this, and he goes, all right, take your book and turn. And he looks, and he, he goes, hi, sissy. <laughs> Everything just stopped. And everybody went back there and hugged her neck. Amen. Say, so what happens when somebody goes shipwrecked? Broken hearts broken dreams amen try to keep folks making right decisions <laughs> amen i talked to a girl one day she had she gave me an exacto blade <laughs> told me she'd cut herself thinking about killing herself and all that i always try to tell the pastor and her mama and her daddy and all that and the gal's mama got mad at all of us I say what is that that's mentally deficient Amen, you don't get mad at something, get mad at sin. Amen, don't get mad at us trying to help her. You know what people don't want? They don't want anything to be exposed. I had my uh, little niece one day, and she had an old rattle trap car, and she was sitting with my mom and dad. She's visiting her grandpa and grandma. So I walked outside, and I popped the hood up and checked the oil. And I come inside, and I said, girl, your car is about two quarts low of oil. I said, I'll run up here to AutoZone and get some oil and put it in there for you. And she goes, oh, what'd you just do? Go out there to try to find something wrong? I said, hey, you little snot. You want to run your car out of oil and blow the engine? I'm trying to be a help to you. I'm telling you, folks, if you don't want help, you get mad at people that try to help you. Amen. And it becomes a pride thing. You can see it in church. You can see it in people coming to listen to preaching. Don't make wrong decisions. The best life is to live for God. You say, well, I want no problems. You'll have problems, but you'll be able to go through the problems with God and with God's people. Amen. You got folks that's gotten married in here, and I don't know, I... I I don't know why in the world you gals will be attracted to these guys. It's amazing to me. I, I'm, I'm amazed by it. Amen. How in the world did you ever wind? How would you do that? I know that things can happen, but you got a lot better chance staying in church, praying together, talking to one another. 
I tell people a lot of times they'll say, Brother Mark, give me some mar marital advice. You know, they're asking me now. Well, that would have been a laugh 30-something years ago. But we've been, me and Dee's been married 38 years. How long y'all been married? Like 85? 49 years. And I said, it may sound cliche. I said, but here it is. Be able to talk to one another. Civilly. You know? What are you looking at? <laughs> Amen. Here's the acid test. Can you tell them? Oh boy, here I get in trouble for saying stuff like this, but I don't care. If you're a man, you're supposed to be the head of your house. Can I hear an amen? There's problems if you can't look at her and go, zip it. That's enough. Don't say, you don't, have, you don't need to say nothing else. That's enough. That's not mean. That's leadership. Amen. Well, who in the world does he think he is telling me what somebody has to? Either that or what? Make a fool out of yourself. <laughs> Amen. Isn't this fun? Your kids, you better be able to speak to them. I can't talk to them. Well... I don't know, beat them or something, do something where you can talk to them. Beat your kids. <coughs> I was talking to a little girl one time. She's in the juvenile justice system. She got arrested as a teenager. Then she, after she turns 18, she'll get tried again and probably do life in prison. She wanted to talk to me. She goes, preacher, preacher. And she's crying. She goes, I wish he was my daddy. I said, why is that, girl? She's 15. She said, because you would have whipped me. You would have made me mine. You can let your kids go on. They can be your pal and all that. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen down the road. Shipwreck. Bad, wrong decisions. Warnings discounted. You've heard it. Heard it over and over again. And then I'll say this, woeful disasters, broken dreams, broken hearts. Amen. Was it Frankie and Donna sing that song? Said, my dreams went through my hand like sands, like grains of sand right through my hand. All the dreams that I had, you know, was without God, it's like just went through my hand. Amen. Try to live your life without him. So what are you talking about? Disasters. Disasters. Bridge out ahead. Beep, 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 beep. One night, me and my cousin was sitting at my house. We was living in Pensacola. And right down the road from us, we heard, <laughs> man, we both jumped. We jumped out of the seat. Hey, man, this poor eyes fat. My knees were gone. We ran down the road. I don't know, it wasn't even a quarter mile, and there was a wreck, man, a bad one. We were there before any responders were there or anybody. We was looking at that car and said, man, alive, there's kids stowed everywhere in there. And then here comes the law, and we're trying to, y'all all right in there? You okay? And we're there, and the police and the ambulance and all's there. And I looked over there, and I seen a Bible in there. And my heart sank. And I started looking at the car, and I told my cousin, my cousin's boy, and I said, Jimmy, I said, I know that car. And it was somebody we knew from the church. And they had went out, and they went after church and all. He was at my house, and they had gotten out, got their buddies, and got their friends, and boom. And all of them banged up. That same gal that was in that car wreck had her Bible in there and all. I've known her since she was a baby. I preached at youth camp this last year, last two or three years, and her daughter has came to camp. And her daughter, she tells me, she goes, she goes, you're my friend. I said, hey, man, girl, I knew your mama. And she said, pray for mama. I said,
that her and her wife don't get along too good. She said, they make fun of me because I'm straight. There was much more disaster that happened just in that little car wreck that night. And that little gal, she's, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. I told her this last year, I said, girl, you're one of my heroes. Come to church when her family makes fun of her about coming. Her mama does. Oh, you going to that church where everybody hates us? She goes, they love me. They love you too if you go. Amen. He mentioned these folks' names. I could mention every one of those names. I could mention a thousand more that went shipwrecked. I could name 12 right out of here. Shipwrecked. Why? Concerning faith and their conscience. Amen. And they didn't stay in the fight. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I don't know, maybe you'd like to come around an altar and ask God to help you not to go shipwreck. <laughs> help me make the right decisions. You got your husband, you got your wife here, maybe it'd be good to pray together. God, help our home. Help these kids. God, help me make right decisions. Help me. Father, bless. Bless tonight. Bless the invitation. Bless Brother Bob as he comes. Lord, help us, God. No more wrecks. Lord, that fog of trouble and smoke and everything that clears and damage and hurt and hospitals. And Lord, that's just the beginning. God, help, I pray in Jesus' name.